I am so tired that I am literally sitting on the step that leads from the house to the sun porch. It's just like frozen, frozen. My body is like, oh no, we have to go back out there. <laughs> we didn't get enough rest yet. It's actually, it's overcast and I find that it's really hard to get motivated on overcast days. I do, like when the sun's out, I am just drawn out like, like a flower, like just, Bring me outside and I will bloom in the sun. But these overcast days are tough for motivation for me. This is a little reminder that you can change your mind. Because I did not plan this pot planting project for the front stairs, I really didn't know what was gonna grow out of these pots. So when the red ones started to grow up, I moved those to the chicken coop and then, um, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's like whites and oranges that are gonna grow out of the rest of them. But I just changed my mind. I took some things out, I put some things in. I put that boxwood in back there. I put this beautiful African daisy here that is not in my normal wheelhouse color story. But for now, while these azaleas are blooming, I thought it would look really pretty. And then all of the white tulips are starting to pop in this front garden. My plan had been to have this be all white so that it would just kind of blend in and show off and shine at night and then let kind of the other flowers that are gonna have some color. I don't love those azaleas. They were planted when we got here and I decided not to move them for now, but mostly they're just green leaves throughout the rest of the year. So I let it slide that I don't love them so much right now. All right, so this is what we've got currently for the pots. And it's super fun seeing the tulips start to start to come up. All right, let's go look. Let's go look at the winter sewing jugs. So, I mean, you really can't beat that, you know? They are looking really good. Um, I'm gonna try to just pull one. So this is the tiny baby onion that you end up planting out, and it seems like ridiculous. It's like, really, you plant that? But you do, you really plant that. But basically, you just take a little pencil or a chopstick and you pop it, pop a little hole in the ground, and then plant this usually just above that white right there, about an inch in, and uh, it will take root. And as it starts to bulb up, the bulb will grow over the soil. But this is where the real magic is. So I've got cabbages here. They look like they definitely need to get in the ground. They're out of the nutrition from these. This is the perpetual spinach. It looks gorgeous. This is the spigari yellow broccoli, the broccoli that you grow for the leaves. These are the chijimi sai greens, chijimi sai greens. Beautiful, those might be the winner. This is deer tongue lettuce, amazing. This is kale, looks great. More kale. And then a couple of calendula in there. And then this is arugula in here. And there's one or two left of the big, um, Tongho big leaf, but I transplanted some of it. This is the big leaf Tongho. These are in the chrysanthemum family. And this one is definitely doing well. So those came from the winter sowing as well. And then I've tried to separate them where these are veggies. Over there inside the fence are the ones that need to be planted. The ones outside the fence are actually all flowers. And then I've pulled the ones that are herbs for the potager garden into that garden. I decided to get some flowers in here. And I realized that when I grabbed these, 
it was just kind of a spontaneous little thing. These are actually the flowers on my vision board from this April New Moon vision board. An African daisy with a blue eye. Could not be more beautiful. And then the arch trellises, because I think arch trellises are ugly. We've got, I've just been weaving these branches in so that when the peas grow up, instead of seeing metal, you'll see this beautiful um, wooden, it'll look like a beautiful wooden arch instead. Can you see it better this way? So all this will be covered by the pea shoots. And then I hung that lovely little wind chime that doesn't actually make noise, so that's weird, in there. And this will be kind of like my favorite room in the garden. And then the fig tree is going to be planted here. And then all the blueberry bushes will be back there. This is the root, this is the uh, rhubarb, which we only planted in the fall, so we can't eat off of it this year. We need to let it establish really good stocks. And then next year, maybe I'll steal like one stock per plant and then hopefully buy that third year we should be eating off of it. I just found this on the rhubarb. It looked a little suspicious. So I pulled it off. I don't know if it's trying to flower. If that was a flower. And maybe I shouldn't have pulled it off, but I did. I pulled that off. It was just my instinct. See, this the thing. Maybe I messed it up. Maybe I didn't. But like you just sometimes have to listen to your intuition. My intuition said, I don't think you should be there. You don't look right. So I popped it off. You guys can tell me if I made the right choice or not. Can you hear the frogs? So the last thing I'm doing before I show you is I'm getting some labels down. The winter boar kale didn't have a label. And then spigari yellow. I don't know why that word challenges me so much. Spigari yellow. As far as varieties go, that's it, you know, that's a broccoli that you grow for the leaves. We love broccoli leaves. Spig R E L O. And um what was my other one? Blue Scotch Kale. Sorry, just writing. Do you want to see? Blue Scotch Kale. Alright, I'm using these plastic labels this year. My wooden labels, which I loved, got completely destroyed and devastated from all the rain and wind, they would just get blown over, the words would wash off, and the actual stake itself, even though they were big, would get just pushed down into the ground. I couldn't find them, we would walk over them. When I was doing garden cleanup this spring, I actually found a lot of the things, but all right, let's go look what there is. So you might have seen me when I was planting, I used my trawl to measure, I don't have my measuring stick, but these are about 12, I don't know if you can hear me over the frogs, these are about 12 inches apart maybe a little longer. And what I do is I go in a diagonal like this so that I can fit, um, you know, I can pop, like I could put some flowers in there if I wanted to, some herbs in there. Um, I've just done it that way and I find it works really well. Cabbage gets big, so you do need to give it space. So this is red express cabbage. 
I found that in one of the winter sewing jugs. I had forgotten about it. Down here is Copenhagen cabbage. Then we move into Golden Acre, looks like. Looks like we have a huge gap right here. Gotta put something in there. I must have had a plan when I was doing it. And then we move to the Napa. And then we move to the Amico, which is like the Napa. And then you can see down here, we start with the kale and the spigarello. And I do things a little differently down here. So what I've done, what I did is I planted the kale in a row, going all the way down the middle. And then on either side of it, I planted the spigariello. So it's basically a grid. You've got one, two, three, four, and one. So that's kale and that's broccoli. And you know, this would be enough kale for ever and ever. Kind of hoping it was gonna rain. So I'm gonna water with a very diluted fish emulsion. I'm just gonna use my watering can. I'm gonna put a tiny splash of fish emulsion in, put the water in and water these in. I just realized, as all good non-planners do, that before I can put the road cover on, I actually have to finish that walkway. Otherwise, I would have to take the road cover completely off and then do it. So it's not all getting cardboard because I'm out of cardboard. I need to go to a store or something. But I have cardboard just for this area here. I'll fill in that little gap with straw that's right in between that, the cardboard and the straw. And then the rest of that walkway will be straw under the wood chip rather than cardboard. And that's, you know, just another way of doing it. It probably won't suppress the weeds quite as well as the cardboard does, but it's what I have, so it's fine. So I'm gonna get a little cardboard, or a little straw in that area. Actually, I might be able to steal some cardboard from where the chicken dug it up in the blueberry patch the someday blueberry patch. And then I've got my, my wheelbarrow of wood chips and I'm just gonna lay that down and then I will get the floating row cover on and this entire row of brassicas will be done. It will be done. I'm so excited, okay. one of those don't do it right the first time and then fix it later kind of people so I'm trying so hard this time to do it right the first time so I don't have to put in this amount of effort and work ever again to prepping the garden but it's very different for my constitution to do it right the first time rather than just taking the fast and easy way but I'm doing it I'm doing it all right, so I've got mulch down here. I filled that with some strong cardboard. It's just gonna be straw on the rest. And I will get that finished mulching, get the road cover on, and then go have a cuppa.
Well, I am happy to report another row is complete. So it's actually across from the other row that's complete. So we've got the broad beans here, and then the walkway that we still need to fix, and then the brassicas under the floating row cover. I know this doesn't look very good with the wood, and we'll probably replace that with something, but I don't know what, and Dave's not here. So I just threw that on. The trick is keeping the wind from getting in so that it doesn't blow off and from keeping any spaces from blowing up so that the little moths can't find their way in. So I'm just using a combination of rocks and wood right now. And uh, I'd like to get some, like these to me are perfect. I can kind of put these skinny long pieces of wood in and then kind of tuck them under and I think it'll look nicer, but at this point, I'm just happy that it's done right and well. It's still super overcast. I think it's gonna be that way for the rest of the day, but it is supposed to get close to 70 today. Well, my body is saying it is time for a cup of tea and some lunch, and I just feel so happy with what I'm getting done. It's basically been one project a day. I've taken you along with me. Um, for every project I've done so far and the way I see it I'm looking at two more weeks To get everything prepped if I do one project a day, maybe a little longer one you got to add in some rain probably and um, Some things are gonna take a little longer like the blueberry bed is gonna take quite a bit of time because of the amount of compost and dirt I need to oh, it's loud. The amount of dirt and compost that I have to pile in there, but otherwise we are moving right along. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for being part of this with me. Thank you for all your suggestions and comments and support. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you are too. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you.